speaking of Mixi accounts and what they, what I mean, thank heavens in a way that they don't require everybody to install Line, which is like the WhatsApp of Japan. I, I suppose that's it. If you wanted Skype, really the the more up to date global standard from people when I talk that I talk to in America and Europe, everyone seems to be using WhatsApp. Um, it, WhatsApp isn't very popular in Japan. Um, and frankly, you add on top of the fact that the fact that it's uh, owned by Facebook and the kind of creepiness aspect, I, I'm okay, kind of okay with that not being uh, the standard. In Japan, it's Line, however. Uh, Line is interesting. Uh, for those of you who don't know, apart from the fact that it is the ubiquitous, it is people do not use Skype, people do not use WhatsApp, they all use Line. Line is actually uh, a, a, an app from Naver, a Korean company. Um, but it's actually not very popular in Korea. In Korea, everyone uses Kakao Talk, uh, but Line, this Korean app, somehow made itself really popular in Japan. Right. And, um, yeah, Line's been through a bit of a kerfuffle this week. So, um, recapping a little bit, but uh, what Line is, in most countries, the uh, preferred messaging, you know, the app of choice in most countries lately seems to be WhatsApp, um, which is kind of like, it's funny, people don't like uh, Facebook or trust it with their data, yet everybody's on Instagram and everyone's on WhatsApp. And that's basically the same. I'm lucky in Japan that I'm in a country where people don't use WhatsApp at all. So I don't have the dilemma of giving all my personal chat information to Facebook. But um, yeah, yeah, in Japan, we have this app, Line. Uh, as I was just explaining before, Line is an interesting uh, phenomenon in that it is not a Japanese company, or at least not originally. It's a, a Line was invented by Naver, which is a Korean company. Yet in Korea, it doesn't have any market share at all. Uh, or very small. It's basically all Kakao talk. It's a different company in Korea. Yet in Japan, Line caught on very, very well. Most Japanese people, if you come to Japan and have friends in Japan, uh, particularly Japanese friends, but pretty much anyone here to have a life in Japan, you have to use the Line app. Um, and it's okay. Uh, you know, it's got it's got your emojis, it's got your chats, it's got everything. It just works like a, basically the same. And um, yeah, everybody uses this in Japan. However, they got into a little bit of trouble this week. It appears that a disgruntled employee of Line uh, sort of leaked, uh, more or less, or, or, or whistle blew that uh, apparently it's very, it's very common for companies in Japan to use um, uh, Japanese-speaking Chinese people in the city of Dalian, uh, which is sort of in northeastern China. Um, it actually, Dalian actually used to be like part of integrated into Japan. It was actually like Hong Kong, for example, for Japan. It was the main city that Japan had on the mainland of China in Manchuria. Uh, it wasn't actually in Manchuria, though it was treated as uh, as um, the main part of Japan. And, and it's partly because of that, that if you want to learn Japanese there still, they have great Japanese universities and they've got a very Japan-friendly history. So lots of Japanese companies invest there, including IT companies that have their um, outsourcing centers, their, their call centers, their data processing centers. It's very common to have them in Dalian. However, someone from Line uh, who seems to have uh, yeah, whistle blew to the government that uh, people in Dalian have uh, access to uh, the personal information they help to process and have access to systems that have the personal information of Line customers. And this set off kind of a panic this week in Japan. Um, uh, in, under Japan's privacy law, Japan's got a kind of similar degree of privacy protection as the EU, which may surprise some people to hear, but in fact, in certain respects, um, yeah, when you, you actually, uh, privacy policies of Japanese companies are required by law to actually name, um, well, you have to get, you have to get consent for having, for any company to send your personal data overseas. Uh, and the privacy policies of those companies and those consents have to say not only where they're sending the data, but actually specifically what countries are, or what companies are the data, is the data going to be shared with. And it sounds like uh, Line wasn't clear that they were sending the data overseas or that they, or which companies or entities th that data was being shared with. And there are bad precedents. There was a case with Mitsubishi UFG a few years ago where uh, an IT subcontractor of a subcontractor d sent some work over to uh, China, uh, which combined with Mitsubishi UFG not encrypting the personal data of their credit card customers. I think it was Mitsubishi UFG. It could have been one of the other banks. But uh, apparently the uh, credit card information, unencrypted credit card uh, names and, <laughs> and information of like a, a whole bunch of, uh, of customers was uh, leaked to uh, the Chinese mafia by a debt-laden uh, IT worker, probably in Dalian. And uh, that caused the whole, that caused, that's partly what caused um, all of these personal data handling restrictions and laws to come out in Japan. It was the fear of this happening again. And uh, it's not clear if any, you know, damage or any leak actually happened as a result of this, but just the fact that a company that basically everybody in Japan uses as a messaging app had this uh, kind of resulted in a bit of a hysterical news cycle where the government announced that they are prohibiting all government agencies from using Line because they don't want China spying on them. 
uh, I've been to Dalian myself. I've worked in Dalian. I've trained people in Dalian supporting Japanese companies. So on the, on the one hand, I, ki I kind of feel like this is a bit of an overreaction. But on the other hand, there's a lot of paranoia about China has it having access to, to data and whatnot. So yeah, the, the Japanese government ministries, uh, the, the Privacy Commission and the Ministry of Communications have called them in. I'm going to say that they're very naughty people. Uh, they're, they're, they're probably going to actually make a big show out of this about penalizing them uh, and they're going to have to update their policies and maybe change how they process their data. So it's interesting. Should you be concerned? Honestly, I'm not that concerned uh, about this. I still, this wouldn't make me change to WhatsApp. <laughs> I'd be more concerned about that. That said, um, you know, yeah, line from what I can understand uh, and what I know of Japanese privacy law, it does seem like they weren't complying with the law and they're going to have to sort that out. So, um, yeah, they're going to be made an example of, but um, should you be deleting your Line app? Uh, I don't think so, uh, actually. Um, it's also a thing that Line actually catches a lot of bashing from right-wingers just because it's a Korean company. Um, it's kind of funny. There'll be, there'll be not a small number of extreme right-wingers in Japan who probably uh, would dislike the data being in Korea more than they would China. Uh, which is messed up in its own <laughs> various ways. It is for intents and purposes. Uh, the subsidiary is a Japanese company. And uh, yeah, yeah, they messed up on this in a way that I'm sure a lot of Japanese companies messed up on this. So it's interesting anyway. That's what that scandal is about. So that's what happened with Line this week.